Howdy y'all, and welcome once again to another episode of The Naked Turner. This morning I'm going to be turning another piece of Australian timber. This particular timber is called Australian Cedar. Now, it isn't really cedar, um, it is tuna, T-O-O, -O, I think it's T-O-O-N-A is how that's spelled. I'll have to check that out and I will post a caption uh, at the bottom of this video. You'll see the actual spelling. Um, this piece was sent to me by Leslie Barker from Australia. Once again, he has been incredibly generous with his time and energy and these small chunks of lumber coming all the way from Australia. And it is definitely not uh, a cheap postage to send stuff all the way from Australia. So I really appreciate everything that you're doing to send these chunks of wood to me, taking time out of your day, uh, as well as money out of your pocket and being so generous with these timbers from Australia. Um, so this particular timber is extremely rot and pest resistant. It has its own uh, uh, pest um, resistant oils inside of this lumber and it looks to be a beautiful piece of wood. So without any more chatter, let's get over to the lathe and start uh, roughing this into a cylinder. Alright, so I've got this piece mounted up on my face plate and I'm going to start by uh, flattening, surfacing this off, removing uh, the corners. I didn't do this on my um, bandsaw because uh, there wasn't really a good flat surface here, so I'm going to actually face this off and then start turning it into a cylinder. In order to do that, I'm going to be using my bowl gouge, a uh, half inch bowl gouge, and just surfacing this off. But, first thing first, don't forget your safety gear. Always remember to read, understand, and follow all the shop safety for any tool that you're going to be using. All right, I'm going to turn on my fan here to move some of this dust away from me. And turn on my lathe, bringing up the speed. Right around 1400 RPM. Okay, so I'm going to circle. I'm surfacing this piece off and getting it ready for turning. Okay, so I had some tear out uh, in here, which I, you can see a little maybe right in here. Um, so what I'm doing is I've raised my tool rest up, so I'm cutting above center line, considerably above center line, way up in here, which is maybe like an inch, an inch and a quarter above center. Um, and this bowl is approximately five and a quarter inches or so, five and three eighths wide right now. So I'm way above the uh, center line on this piece, like one third at least above. So now what I'm going to do, I have this spinning up here at 2100 RPM. Okay, a little bit fast for this size bowl, but I'm doing that to get a nice sheer uh, cut with my skew. So I'm coming in, rubbing my bevel, introducing a cutting edge. I'm doing a very, very light finish cut across that surface. Same thing, rubbing my bevel, introducing a cutting edge. And I'm just barely shaving off micron, little microns of timber here. And now, I think you can see that I got a really nice, almost polished, cut around this piece, which will reduce the amount of sanding I have to do. I see a little bit more tear out right here, so I'll do another pass. And 
this is what I'm getting. I'm getting these, like, even finer than angel hair particles. Okay, that looks real good. That's a spot where I'm just going to continue to get probably little tear outs. But uh, I'm going to do one more pass there. See if I can get below that tear out. some questions about um, my finishing so the main thing about finishing that uh, most people forget about is it's just like anything else it's all about your prep work doesn't matter what kind of finish you put on if you haven't done the appropriate prep work and oftentimes I will think I've done enough prep and I will finish something and then once I get it in some really good sunlight I notice ah, I should have done a little bit more uh, step sanding or a little bit more wet sanding um, so uh, it's all about the preparation process so what I like to do first is this is already very smooth so I'm starting out here with some 180 grit sandpaper I could probably even go to 220 but there are some pieces of end grain here that I'm gonna hit first then I'm gonna stand them up again with some denatured alcohol then I will go ahead and sand them again. So turning my blade speed. I'm, oh, also, I'm using this friction sander that I made out of a right angle Milwaukee drill head. Uh, if you want to see how to make these, Miguel Sanchez on YouTube shows how to make these handy tools. I'm doing some step sanding with my friction sander. So I have this now sanded down to 320, wiped off all the excess dust. But now what I'm going to be doing is coming in here and spinning this down real slow, down around 100 RPM, and putting some denatured alcohol on to stand the grain up. Just squirting a little. And that's going to do a couple different things. It's getting rid of any of the additional wood dust, which you can see here on my rag, out of the pores. And it's also standing up the grain, like I said. It's going to be a beautiful piece here. It's got some real nice grain to it. Alright, so now what I'm doing is I'm going to let that dry off a little bit here. If I wanted to, I could put a little more on. Let's do that. We'll do a quick burn off. Like I did with that burl. Because it also does another thing. It cauterizes the ends of those uh, pieces of grain that are standing up. It sort of cauterizes them off. And burns off all the excess fluid like that. And then I'll be doing a little sanding if there's any little burn spots like that one there that'll all get re-sanded away. So now it's dry again. It's nice and dry and ready for some sanding just to get rid of all the last little nubs. And then once that sanding is done, I'll apply some sanding sealer. Okay, so now I'm going to apply some sanding sealer. And this is just a shellac and denatured alcohol sanding sealer. And you can mix it at different ratios depending on what types of wood you're working with. The harder the wood, uh, you can go a little bit uh, thicker or thinner, depending on the, the look you're going for. 
but it's all about <coughs> excuse me it's all about doing some experimentation on your own and coming up with something that works for you uh, everybody has their own levels of finish that they like to achieve and I'm just starting to get better and better at my finishes and like I said it's all about the prep work so now the sanding sealer is on we will now allow that to fully dry then I'll come back and denib that and you can denib this several different ways um, you can do it with some sand, some wet dry sandpaper and some oil which is generally what I do or you can come back with a um, uh, quadruple ought uh, or ultra fine uh, steel wool which you can just take some wool wire cloth and denib this. This is actually almost dry right now so and it's feeling really smooth. So as soon as this is dry I have a fan blowing across here. Um, as soon as this is dry I will denib this and then we will probably apply a second layer of sanding sealer and then we'll go to a finish. Alright so now for a little denibbing. Spinning slow taking a little wire wool and this is quadruple lot wire wool or ultra fine wire wool a lot of the time I don't like to use this on open grain real open grain woods because you can get little bits and pieces of the uh, wire wool down in there which will oxidize and turn blue or black over time. Uh, so most of the time I just use, uh, I just go ahead and do the um, wet dry paper. Uh, you run less of a risk of having bluing or anything like that. Okay, so now turning on once again and applying some more sanding sealer second coat. Spinning real slowly, I'm taking some wet dry paper and I'll be applying some walnut oil. And this is just walnut oil you can pick up near all the other oils in the uh, right in your supermarket. I think I got this one uh, at Lucky's or Safeway, I can't remember which one, but anyway, you can get it anywhere like that. It's good for your salad dressings, too. Nice thing with walnut oil is it is an oil that, um, if you keep it in a cool, dry place, uh, it will not go rancid very easily. And then once you apply it to your bowl, and it dries and oxidizes within about 24 hours uh, it won't go rancid ever and it makes uh, it becomes kind of like a hard uh, surface so I like using it in conjunction with my friction rub uh, it works pretty nicely or I use the Howard's Butcher Block conditioning oil it's all about the prep work is remove the excess here. And it kind of burnishes. This is almost a friction rub finish of its of its own here. Removing any excess. Alright. I'm gonna be applying some friction rub polish to the outside edge of this bowl. And uh, it is now finished up to 320 grit wet dry paper. And if I had some, some which I'm going to get some soon, I keep saying this, but I got to get some 600 grit, uh, up to 600 grit paper, and maybe even some 800 for certain woods. But this has some beautiful chatoyance uh, or fire uh, figuring in this piece. And I can't wait to flip it around and try to turn this into a bowl, see if I can accomplish that. Okay, so now, spinning slowly, 
and applying some, some of this shellac, denatured alcohol, oil, and waxes, which I mix at uh, different ratios at different times, and I have different ones. If you want to see a video on how to make this stuff, um, Captain, Captain Eddie Castellan, he has videos on how to make shine juice or friction rub polish, uh, and they're very detailed, easy to follow videos, so tune in to see his, his videos. And I like this finish because it's very easy to apply, gives you a nice result. You can still see the grain of the wood. And uh, turns out real nice. Okay, so now I'm going to stop and turn my lathe in the forward direction here for a minute. Just so you can see a little more. So I'm just watching the finish and the luster that I'm getting. And then once I'm happy with it, I'll stop. And I'm actually going to leave that little foot on there when I'm done, as long as I don't get too much dimpling. I may decide at some point to turn that off, but until I'm totally happy with the bowl, I will leave this little recess on my foot. Uh, and that way, even if I want to, like, say, a day later, come back and do a little more finishing on the inside of the bowl, I still have that potential. But sometimes you'll notice something on the inside of the bowl that you hadn't noticed before. I'm increasing the speed up to around 1900 RPM. And polishing those waxes and shellac. And since I'm using cloth, I ball it up pretty much all the time, and then I have just a light hold on it. That way, if it gets grabbed, it just gets uh, thrown away and my fingers aren't wrapped around it in any way. And that way I can get a real nice, even burnish. And you can see it moving across the back side of the bowl. That's where I'm watching. Okay. Coming in here on the curve. Same thing down here. Alright. And that finish is done. That looks nice. Looks real nice. Like I said, if I had some 600 grit, I would really like it. So now I'm just taking very lightly, wiping down. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. I still do have some, like, the fibers of the cloth are even enough to make little lines here. So now what I'll come back and do is hand buff this. Just kind of swirl it, get rid of some of those marks. And uh, there you go, that's the back side of the bowl finished. I'll flip it around and start doing some hollowing. Okay, so as you can see, I have this uh, flipped around. It's tightened down on my scroll and draw chuck. Uh, my tool rest and banjo are tightened off. And I have my leg speed down low to start checking it out. It's spinning real nice and true on the bowl part. There's very little change. So now what I'm going to do first, I've actually I looked at this, and because I like the grain of this outer wall of this bowl, I think I'm just going to do a very simple bowl uh, shape leaving this square top edge and not doing a return curve hollow form. 
just so I can, it's already a fairly small bowl, that way it'll be a little more useful. Plus it matches some other bowls that I have. Okay, bringing up the speed here, I'm at almost 1200. Okay, I'm starting the hollowing process using my half inch bowl gouge. Defining an edge so that my bowl gouge won't slip out and now just hollowing and hollowing and hollowing away. I've got a nice, it's actually down to about quarter inch wall thickness here. I'm just going to try to maintain that all the way down through here. I'm continuing to use my half inch bowl gouge to remove material from the inside of this bowl checking the wall thickness and consistency and making sure that I rub my bevel all the way through the cut to ensure a nice smooth and safe cut so as I won't get any catches or tear so out. My wife has been doing juicing and so I got some beet, celery, apple, pineapple uh, juice here with some ginger in it and oh my goodness some carrots. Um, super duper good for you and keeps me out here turning so uh, I could be locked down out here but as long as I was getting this I would feel pretty good about it <laughs> and up at 1400 rpm uh, rubbing my bevel safely down the wall until I feel my cutter the cutter, lowering the handle, rubbing my bevel, and then reversing. Okay. All right, I'm doing a pull cut from the bottom, checking my depth. There's some beautiful figuring in the bottom of this bowl, and uh, unfortunately. I'm cutting through some of it, but there still will be some left in the bottom of this beautiful bowl of Australian red cedar. Okay, so I've got a nice sharp scraper now coming in. Using my half inch by half inch heavy duty Robert Sorby scraper to remove material from the bottom and now my half inch bowl gouge to do some shear scraping along the side of the bowl wall. And now this is just about ready. Oh yeah, that is 
going to have an absolutely gorgeous uh, fig ring and grain patterns in this bowl and it is now two and almost seven eighths deep three and a quarter inches by five inches around and uh, bless I want to thank you once again man this uh, this stuff is incredible beautiful and I have some other bowls that uh, I made that look very much like this and maybe I'll post a picture of uh, a couple of those bowls with this at the end. So now I'm just going to put on my finish and uh, pull this off and take some stills. Thank you so much for watching another episode of The Naked Turner. If you enjoyed this video, please take the time to give me a thumbs up, make a comment, and share this with friends. If you're not a subscriber, take the time to subscribe. And if you are a subscriber, I truly appreciate your continued support. Thank you so much. Safe turning and have a great day.